Sitting in with me now for the Beach Patrol report is Jack Brooks, president of the Ocean City Beach Patrol Lifeguard Alumni Association. You just got in from uh, Vegas, you said, right? You just flying? I just flew in from Las Vegas. Boy, are my arms tired. <laughs> Jack Brooks, good to see you, man. Hey, it's great to see you hey, and cool. Dorky Josh. Dorky you know, I mean, yeah, hey, again, I, you know, if only you'd been a rookie on the beach patrol, oh, we would have changed that. that. Tennis balls in the water, right? Oh, man, that, fir- that, that first summer would have been uh, <laughs> his coming of age. <laughs> you did abuse your, you know, you can't haze people anymore. We, they don't we, like it used to be when you guys were You know, I, I actually had this conversation with an alum this morning, <laughs> and I said, you know, it wasn't about that as much as it was mentoring people. Right. There were fun things, but that made the day go by faster. Right. So, you know, it's, it's, I, I don't think it was, it's more or less like anything else rookie football camp, rookie right. basketball yeah. camp. You know, there's well, a certain amount of stuff but, you have but to do. But times have changed. It's not like times just, have yeah, changed. Yeah. 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 All right. We so, change with the times. So we have you in here for the Beach Patrol Report. Uh, the Beach Patrol Report is brought to you by McCann Realtors of Seattle City, 4111 Landis Avenue in Seattle. Knowledgeable experience, integrity, dedication. For rental and sales, call 609-263-7422 or go online at McCannRealtors.com where you can also keep up with all the South Jersey lifeguarding news and racing schedules. And by the Ocean City Beach Patrol Lifeguard Alumni Association celebrating 125 years of protecting the beaches. Uh, We're going to talk with a legendary beach patroller next, Jack. Our first guest, let's go to the Maserati, the Mainline Sports Hotline, and welcome into the locker room former chief of the Seattle City Beach Patrol, or yeah, chief, and he's now a historian of the Beach Patrol. He write, he, he, he's written a book, and he has one on the way. Some of us are writing history before we are history. <laughs> Let, <laughs> let's welcome in Tom McCann. Good morning, Tom McCann. Billy, how are you? <laughs> All right. I got Jack Brooks in here, so now he's like, you know, you know how Jack Brooks is. Talk about legends. <laughs> <laughs> he's a legend in his own mind. That's That's right. <laughs> We we say that often, don't we? Tom, I wanted to get Let's you on the that. program, Tommy, because um, you're 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 a historian of the Beach Patrol, and there's so many people. We were talking about it earlier that aren't you know they're they're they're, they're, they're they come down on vacation, and they're not really familiar with all that goes on with the Beach Patrols up and down the coast, from you know Brigantine. I'm just naming the South Jersey beach Patrols, but Brigantine right. down to Cape May Point, and right. uh, there's so much of uh, history there that uh, I just wanted to get you on to talk about what you're doing now. Okay. Well, thanks for doing this, Billy. I appreciate it. And I think all the lifeguard captains in South Jersey appreciate it also because it shines a light on what the captains have to do. And there isn't a captain out there right now that isn't uneasy as the summer starts, as you always get that feeling, do I have everything in place? Do I have all the rescue equipment, the radio equipment? Uh, Everybody's trained properly, the certifications, like you were just talking about with Jack, uh, times have changed, and uh, we're changing with it very nicely. Um, But uh, to get a little background on the history of that city, whatever city they're in, is really helpful because it just shows you how far back we go in the life-saving business and and what we've done to change over the years. And I'm going to probably chronicle that pretty well in the book, showing how we've progressed from lifesavers to lifeguards. And there's a big difference there. And uh, a guy like Billy, you were, you were sat in that seat, and Jack and myself on that stand yeah. where you are now a lifeguard, so you're trying to prevent things from happening instead of re- responding to things when they do happen. And, you know, Jack Brooks uh, is in here with me today. But, Jack, it seems like the only time you ever hear, especially if you're, say, west of here, in Pennsylvania or wherever, you, you'll say, oh, there was a drowning in this town and a drowning yeah. in that town. You don't realize – like how many people can get in trouble so quickly and, and we have the beach patrols to thank. You know, we, we do. And I, and yeah. I just say, what would the statistics be? Because we already know the statistics right. about people dying on unprotected beaches. Right. That's really the key. People don't understand rip currents and so on. Trained lifeguards are there. We always say swim in front of a lifeguard. Tragically, people don't. And we, we lose people in New Jersey, Florida, everywhere and it's proven time and again the value of beach patrol now you can't quantify it on rescues and i know tom would say that it's really about prevention by the time you're in a rescue a number of things went wrong or a big set of waves came in there's always the unexpected and i think the guards 
I, and I know you've done a great job training. I know up and down the coast they do a great job of training. The job is predominantly prevention. Swim in front of the lifeguard. Keep them in a box. Don't let them get into trouble. Yeah. Hey, you know, I got yeah. to tell you, Tom, uh, my yeah. brother's boys, Colin and Cody Schwime, are now on the Ocean City Beach Patrol. We're very proud of them. Uh, we were talking Wonderful. today, maybe you, you guys can shed some light on this, the difference between a save and a rescue. Tom, you want to go first with right. that? Yeah, well, a, a, a save is actually what Jack's talking about. You're really preventing the rescue. You're, you're making it not worse than it already c- it could be. Uh, if you're going out into a rip or a, a strong undertow, uh, to put it in the, the layman's terms, people are familiar with undertows, but they don't know the other terminologies that really cause problems for lifeguards in the stand. You don't, the people don't realize that when they come down – uh, on the beach and it's low tide in the afternoon it's high tide it's a totally different kind of beach yeah. the, be- the beach changes dramatically with a high tide all of a sudden those rocks or pilings or holes aren't seen when it's high tide where they were there at low tide so the lifeguards learn how to look at low tide and look at the ground look where the crevices are so they can stay away from those areas but a rescue is something that is well coordinated. And one of the things that I can, I'm going to be pointing at in my book are, and what they've always done, you with the United States Life Saving Service drills. They drilled and drilled. They had drill days once a week in the, while you worked for the United States Life Saving Service. And that was the organization that preceded the Coast Guard and the lifeguards. Actually, that is the mother of both of those organizations. And but what they did very early in their, in their existence is drill weekly. And those drills, several times, guys died doing it because of the hazardous conditions they were dealing with. So even in the drills, they're dangerous. So the rescue is something that's so critical to what Jack and I and you went through as we were guards. You go on a rescue, man, you better make sure that chain doesn't break. You better make sure that boat gets out there. And the more equipment you have out there, the better. Yeah. Uh, some people say, well, this over that. No. Send that out, then send it out oh, board yeah. out. Then everybody goes out there with the different devices. And the more you have out there, the better. And I, we always would say, and uh, Jack would know this very well too, senior man on the scene takes over. If it's a lieutenant, you know, or a senior guard, whoever takes over, and someone has to take charge of that rescue because it's a whole different dynamic out there once you're dealing with those rips. Yeah, you know, it's, it's the chain of command becomes so important, but also, like you were saying, drilling and understanding where – Everybody is supposed to be, and that's um, really where you spend a lot of time your rookie season, and yeah, I'll even argue the second year, really understanding those roles. I've been with people that, boy, when, when, when it goes bad, it goes bad so fast. And I've often said, first thing you have to do is pull the crowd in front of you if you're bumping and running down to protect another beach. That's the first right. of the coordination. Second is the radio. Exactly. Get the other people alerted and help there. But th- sometimes it happens so fast on the beach, people are like, their jaws drop, that you're going at, at full speed and, and you're going to retrieve people because if it's four, it can easily become eight, yep. 12, or 16. Like, time is of the essence. A- absolutely you, 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 of the essence. It. And the bigger those eyes, uh, the, the wider the eye saucers <laughs> are, that's the guy you got to get first or a gal. Exactly. Yeah, no, yeah. yeah so, some of the others will take <laughs> care of themselves. But, boy, when they panic – it's all over, man. It's it's kind of like Josh, you know. He looks, he, he gets a little panicky <laughs> when I, here. When, you I'm know. Going, when I'm going over my deadline, you see Josh start rolling his fingers. <laughs> all right, we're talking with former chief of the uh, Seattle City Beach Patrol, Tom McCann. He's a historian. Tom, what's the name of your book? Have you have you have a title yet? History of South Jersey Lifeguards from Bringing Team to Cape May Point. And when can we look at when can we look at that? Uh, the, when will that book well, be? We're, I'm hoping to get it done by the end of the summer. Okay. You know, uh, my my day keeps going changing because of different moving parts. And uh, the thing that's unbelievable is the amount of information that flows my way yeah. because of this book. It's really the guys in South Jersey and the gals in South Jersey are phenomenal. And I just want to make one point, Billy, that you were talking about earlier. I, I, when I was doing my first book in 2001, I did research on all the drownings that occurred in Seattle City before lifeguards, and I stopped at 60 wow. drownings. Wow. I stopped at 60, mm. and I said, I'm not going to put – I'm going to just put one or two of these in there because it's disastrous to read about them. But 
Uh, but I had to put enough out there to let them know that there are drownings. But like Jack said, if we weren't there, it would have yeah. never stopped. It well, would have t- never stopped. Well, Tom, listen, we, 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 we're glad and appreciative you uh, took time to uh, come on the program today. I know it's 4th of July weekend. Excuse me, happy 4th of I'm July. I'm honored to do it, Billy. Honored to be with you. And we'll see you at the races. Absolutely, on the fire line. There he is. Hey, Jack. All right, see you Tommy on the beach. McCann, there he is. Tommy McCann on the Maserati, the main line sports hotline. All right, for over 83 years, Circle Liquor Stores offered the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits in South Jersey. It's just a stone's throw away from Ocean City. It's a landmark with a friendly staff. It's no wonder why Circle Liquors was named Best of Philly, Best of Atlantic City, with the most competitive prices around. Circle Liquor Store is now a proud sponsor of the second hour of the locker room with Billy Schwime. Throwing a party, wedding, 4th of July. How about night in Venice? Let Chet and his staff make sure you have everything you need. Check out the website at circleliquors.com or give them a call at 609-927-2921. That's Circle Liquor Store. They deliver. Uh, folks, I'm here to tell you about Maserati, the main line. The all-new Maserati Grigali midsize SUV has officially arrived. Stop by Maserati, the main line, located in Devon, PA, just minutes away from Center City, Philadelphia, to experience it for yourself. With class-leading space, advanced driving, and technology features, their Gagali makes every journey a thrilling experience. From your daily commute to weekend road trips, the Maserati Gregali elevates every moment into something truly special. Test drive the all-new Gregali for yourself and experience how it makes every day exceptional. Visit them online at MOTML.com or give them a call at 484-804-4800. That's 484-804-4800. Ask for Michael Pileggi to schedule your test drive today. All right, when we return, we'll continue more with the Beach Patrol Report. You're listening to, with Billy Schwein and Jack Brooks right here on 97.3 ESPN. Now, more of The Locker Room with Billy Schwein on 97.3 ESPN and the 97.3 ESPN free mobile app. All right, we're back broadcasting live at the Tom's River Auto Group studio right here in Northfield. Billy Schwein and the president of the Ocean City Beach Patrol Lifeguard Alumni Association, Jack Brooks is with me as we're doing the Beach Patrol Report every Saturday throughout the summer, Jack. I'm looking forward to it. It's our 125th anniversary yeah. of paid life-saving in Ocean City, New Jersey. Yeah. And, you know, every Beach Patrol has their history. It isn't. We, we just happen to have one of those century uh, years, you know, yes. 125. So. Well, there, there's so many great uh, athletes and competitors up and down the coast. And every week leading up to the races, we've had a chance to talk to some of the Chiefs uh, from Brigantine, we talked to Kip Emick, uh, we talked to uh, Lieutenant, uh, or the Captain of, of the uh, Ventnor City Beach Patrol, David Funk, worked our way south, we talked with Ocean City, Eric Becker, and then Lieutenant of the Avalon Beach Patrol, uh, Eric Wolf. Now let's go to the Maserati of the Mainline Sports Hotline and welcome in Chief of the Wildwood Beach Patrol, he's a good friend of ours, Chief Stocks, good morning Chief. Billy and Jack, good morning to you guys. All right, how's, what's the weather looking like down there? How's the, how's, what's the water temperature? Give us all the, all the, the stuff we need to know. High tide, sure, what's high te- tide? Yeah. <laughs> high tide's going to be late today, probably around 6.30. All right. um, when I looked at the board this morning, the water temp is a, is a balmy 69. Wow. Uh, we've, got, we've got flat water, a, a slightly overcast, low winds, maybe five miles an hour, flat ocean. Little bar break, beautiful day here in Wildwood. Uh, Chief Stocks, you and I uh, spoke the other day. We're super excited that we're going to be broadcasting live uh, from the Dutch Hoffmans on July 28th. We're really looking forward to that because, uh, Jack, as you know, the Dutch Hoffman starts off the big three. It's the Dutch Hoffmans, it's the Margate Memorials, and then the South Jersey Lifeguard Championships, and we are looking forward to it. And then, sadly, it's the end of summer. And, you know, then it's the Galleys. <laughs> and Chief Stocks, you know what I, t- I said last week to uh, Eric Wolf? I said, you know, and John McShane was sitting in there. I said, you know, I love the Galleys. I mean, it's, it's a great race, but I hate the Galleys because – you get to the galleys. I'm interviewing people in the dark. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm telling the shadow. I, 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 I know Chief knows this. The shadows get very long, my friends. In August, you know you. you, you, you oh my you, God! You're, you're suddenly guys, stands- calm down. Calm, <laughs> calm down. It's July first. All right. Will you calm well, down? <laughs> now wait a minute. That's only so people make an effort to enjoy as much of the racing season, as much of the lifeguard season, as much of the summer season as possible. So. We have to remember it's here, but a blink of an eye. Now, Chief Stocks, uh, so we were talking with Tom McCann, uh, and I know you know the McCann brothers really well, but Tommy made a good point, and Jack reiterated that the fact that 
uh, between high tide and low tide, the beach changes. And your lifeguards, the guys, the guys and gals in your patrol, they, they got to be aware of that. And they are aware of it, but they got to be cognizant of watching people that aren't aware, aren't aware of that. Absolutely. Um, the, so the last five days, I would say we averaged about eight to ten rescues a day. Wow. And almost, almost all of them occurred on the incoming tide when the short gully, when the first gully begins to fill up with water and the rips start to pop off. Yep. If you're not like if you're not familiar with with the beach with the beach, I mean you, you know come down for a week. And you're not familiar. Make sure you swim in front of a lifeguard because uh, you know Chief Stocks. You you guys are trained. Your guys and gals are trained. They're proficient in in, uh, in CPR. Is that correct? And they and they sure. yeah absolutely. Explain explain highly what they go explain what they go through. Absolutely, highly trained lifeguards. The city of Wildwood, the Wildwood Beach Patrol. We provide 100 days. Eight-hour days of guarded beaches. I mean, and that's when you want to go to the beach. That's when you want to enjoy the ocean. Now, our ocean is open till 10, and we, we welcome you to stay on the beach, but do not, when I said the ocean, I, the beach is open till 10. Do not go in the ocean after lifeguards are on duty. They will clear the water at 515. We make sure everyone is out of the water, and everyone is aware that the lifeguards are going off duty. Now, as far as training goes, the lifeguards are put through a rigorous requalification uh, a physical requalification, and then they must pass the uh, requalification standards for uh, CPR, uh, first aid, and also advanced first aid, as well as T-spine training, oxygen administration, uh, cervical spine injury management in the surf. And as always in South Jersey, every, every beach patrol has an EMT on duty at all times as well. You see, Jack, do you see how, I mean, do people, I don't think the average person realizes what the training needs. You see guys and, guys and gals in the stand, they look like they're just getting a suntan, but they're not. They're well, protecting us. Well, and I, I think Chief will agree with me. Now you're putting that on the shoulders of a young 16-year-old 18. Uh, person, eight, 17, 18. They're the frontline folks. And you, you grow up a lot that summer. You grow up an awful lot. You realize that uh, chain of command is important, dressing, showing up to work on time. I felt it was an inva- right. I thought it was an extremely valuable experience for, for, for young life, folks. For their life moving forward. Whether, whether one year or some of us were more seasoned. <laughs> <veterans. laughs> sure. But let me, let me say, fellas, let me say, fellas, that Wildwood's a little different, and we tell the young lifeguards, the new candidates right from day one that Wildwood is unlike other places in South Jersey. We have a high percentage of weakened Mm non-swimmers. We have dangerous rip currents and there's a high likelihood that they will be involved in a rescue in their first week of work. They finished rookie school with a half a day of instruction on Wednesday. We sent them out to their stands within a half hour. Some of them were in the water making ocean rescues here in Wildwood. But they were comfortable doing it because they feel like they've got some training, right? Professional. Ready to go. Yeah, they're not they're not alone, and you know the rescues are made in the three man team, and the first year lifeguards are certainly not left alone. Uh, the first two weeks they're out on the stand, you know rookie school you teach them as much as you can, you coach them up, you train them up, but the real learning occurs in the stand with the lifeguards that have experience watching the water. And I got to tell you guys, I just got a text message. I have three people that I used to work with. They're down in, in Wildwood. They're going, we're listening to you, T-Bone, and Jimmy Reard down there in Wildwood. You're talking to the Chief. <laughs> They're going nuts. Uh, chief, let's turn our attention to the racing season, guys, because that's, I mean, that, that's, what the, that's, when the fun, that's where the fun is, right, Jack? We, I, we, we I think love the, racing. I think the fun, the camaraderie, yeah. the esprit de corps, uh, as I've said on the program a few weeks ago, Penn State's, uh, only a few people play football, but a lot of people are cheering in the stands. Yeah, yeah. So uh, you have the uh, your first the first race, and I call it the AFC NFC. Uh, Longport has the Mike McGrath Memorials on Friday, July seventh at six thirty, and then the Cape May County Lifeguard Championships in Wildwood Crest. Uh, you guys uh, do a great job there, and they do a great job down there in the Crest. But some of the guys, like the competitors, it just like I, I'm looking at the list of competitors from last, just from last year, and I don't know if everybody's back. But you know, you have the Matt Wolf and Nagel and uh, Avalon are always competitive. You got Strom and Leeds in North Wildwood. And Wildwood, I guess, Brandon Br- Joyce is coming back, right? Uh, uh, Co- Absolutely, uh, yes. Steve McGuinn, is he back? Yes. And then Wildwood Crest has a uh, uh, Bakey and Klecko. And you know that name, that name, that name yeah. is, is familiar. But th- I'm telling you, that, that competitiveness in the south, ed- south of the, uh, you know, down south, is, it's amazing. And it's starting next week. 
What better free lo- entertainment? I love that race. Yeah, what what better free entertainment race, yeah. than standing on the beach, uh, watching these guys go at it? And they're top notch guys and gals are top notch athletes. You know, they uh, they really they they put the cities in such good light. You know, they really do because you're watching them. <laughs> It it just they go at it, you know, and and but I yet- like it because Steve uh, Chief Stocks. I love it because each town is going for supremacy. Absolutely, you know what I mean? it's bragging rights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially on this island where you know we're connected by one long beach. <laughs> Wildwood, Wildwood Crest, and North Wildwood, we're connected on one long beach. So that's a, that's a real hometown competition, and you have the hometown crowd right there because everybody uh, knows and- everybody, right? Absolutely. In 2017, we were lucky enough to win a Cape May County title. And our goal always is, is to identify the talent very early in the season, train them real hard with targeting the Cape May counties in mind. So you send, you send a strong team in the counties. And I never say, hey, I need doubles to win or I need the surf dash team to win. Our goal as a team is to score in every event. In 2017, we scored in every single event. It put us, uh, gave us a one-point win over Ocean City when the Surf Dash team picked up one point. Uh, it, it was amazing. So that's our goal is to score in every event. We've been a top three team uh, almost all of the last 10 years in the Cape May counties because we really love to target that race. We're talking with the chief of the Wildwood Beach Patrol, Steve Stocks. Uh, now, I want to ask you two guys because times are changing. We talked about this earlier. In the big three, you have the singles, doubles, and the swim. Are we can we can we talk about? Is, uh, there's an elephant in the room every year with us, uh, the paddleboard. Are we ever going to see the paddleboard in the competition? Well, the paddleboard <laughs> has been introduced to some uh, <laughs> races. Listen right. To the chief stocks. Um, you know, it, uh, I think I think it's it's like anything else. The rescue equipment is, is progressed what, over the, the years. All the beaches have them, Jack. All beaches have paddle boards. Uh, you know, I I, I was a, I was I, probably the last of the dinosaurs that actually had wooden boats on the beach. <laughs> you know, and then they turned to fiberglass and then jet skis and you know and, and but paddle boards serve a purpose, and there's racing in them. And, and Chief Stocks, hold on, Jack. Chief Stocks, I'm not advocating paddle boards. I mean, I'm I'm a traditionalist because I hear you kind of like. Sucking in a little wind, but I just, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just putting it out there, Chief. No, I understand. So I, I'll tell you, fun, I can tell you a funny story, a little, little history, a little background. 2017, 2013, my first year as Chief of the Wildwood Beach Patrol. I'm a young Chief, and I go to the South Jersey Lifeguard Chiefs meeting, and I raise my hand, and I make a motion that we, we like to call it the rescue board. I make a motion that we put the rescue board in the South Jersey Lifeguard Championships. Oh, my goodness. Well, it was like that, EF Hunt talks. Was... Everybody turned around and looked at you. Yeah, but not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. uh, Mar- Mary Wolf beat me beat me up quite soundly that day. Rookie, uh, rookie move there. Uh, rookie move, yeah. Steve. I humbly took a beating from Murray Wolf, and I, I thought we might have the votes, and we did. But you know what? I, 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 I took that learning experience, and I, what we did is we turned it. We put, I put my energy into our race. Yeah. I mean, I'll let the South Jersey – I'll let the South Jersey Chiefs decide how the South Jerseys are going to be. And in our race here at the Dutch Hoffman's in Wildwood on the 28th, right? So we have the doubles row. We have the, what we call it the open row. It's an open doubles row. Anybody can row in that event. Then we have men paddle, women paddle, men swim, women swim, men run, women run. That's a one mile run. And then we finish off with the singles. I love our format and I think it works for us. I get a lot of compliments on that format. And, and and we're really happy with that. You have a fan in me. Uh, I think I think that those are great um, events. You got a lot of daylight this time of year, and I think you know you're you're giving all the guarding skills uh, a shot there, both men and women, and the runs and and as well as the paddle singles. Well, one of the best finishes I've ever seen was when uh, I think tight one of the Tice boys in in, in the Dutch Hoffins. It was a, it was like a photo finish, like a horse race. And what what I got what I did was it, it, like as soon as and these and by the way, uh, Chief Stocks, you, you, the guys and gals, the competitors, give me great access. Like as soon as they get done the race, I'm in their face with the microphone. Unbelievable! And it's like it's like it's like ABC's Why World of Sports, the thrill of victory, the human drama of athletic competition, the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And these guys right. give guys and gals give me access. That was probably one of the best finishes I've ever seen, Chief Stocks. Right. And let me tell you, you know, I've got Lieutenant Katie Collins. We've had Tess McVan. Uh, we've had Bella Taylor. Like, so these are stellar women athletes that are lifeguarding on the beach. 
And I want them to be a part of our hometown race. I don't want to have a whole other separate race on a separate night. I want them at the main event. I, I think you do a great way to yeah. kick it off, and that really is the theme for the, the season. Kudos to that. I'll be down there uh, yeah. covering the race. Yeah, you'll be Friday. covering it for you. We'll, yeah. And, we'll, of course, we'll be broadcasting live on July 28th at the Dutch Hopkins in Wildwood Chief Stocks. Thank you so much for coming on, and uh, have a great 4th of July weekend, and we look to talk to you soon. Thank you, fellas. Happy summer. Happy summer. There he is, uh, Chief Stocks, on the Maserati of the Mainline Sports Hotline. Jack, I'm pumped. Because, you know, we, we go way back. We, yeah. we, you know, you were on the beach patrol for many years. I was in Longport. Um, it's just, to me, it's summer. It's the epitome of summer. Right? Yeah, we're, we're, we're right. You know, I, I, I was trying to wrap up the summer, but I'm just trying to tell people. He didn't like there's his only a, the there's, a, there's no, no deferring these things. This is, <laughs> this is like, do it now. Enjoy the summer. Suck in every day that you can. Go to every event yeah. that you can. And uh, and really get to know some of these athletes, too. It, it makes it a lot more fun. Like, you gave a whole list of people that have been around. I will say this. When Chief Stocks came in and took over for right. Wildwood, I'll say he had an immediate impact. I mean, an immediate, immediate impact. impact. Yeah. And like he said, okay, so he, he brought it to the Chiefs meeting and said they should do something. But you know what? Those ideas – or what makes everybody better. Right. It's not, I will say there's a lot of camaraderie. It's not like, oh, in our beach patrol, you know. Jack, would you be, let me ask you this. Would you be opposed, it just in the, like, the Margates and the South Jersey Lifeguard Championships, there's guys and gals now, have like a, maybe one race where you could either incorporate a paddle with, with a guy and a girl in the I, race. I'm not because opposed. I mean, I'm just, I'm just throwing it out there. Yeah. I I th- I think what you're trying to do is uh, you know say hey maybe Pony should race in the Kentucky Derby you well, know like like well. it, it makes it a little more exciting I guess for groups what I'm saying is by then th- three events three win you know they it's do, tradition but they could do one they could do one more event. well there are events that that there know, are there races are that other, have a right, lot of these things true. I mean the the that's women's true. tournament that's in true. Ocean City is and coming up that's the up. argument right the argument is they have opportunity to race. And, uh, and yeah, but the big three, the historic three, people like the tradition. But traditions, you know, right. made to be broken, yep. I guess. All right. Hey, for over 83 years, Circle Liquor Stores offered the best selection of beer, wine, and spirits in South Jersey. Just a stone's throw away from Ocean City. It's a landmark with friendly staff. It's no wonder why Circle Liquors was named Best of Philly, Best of Atlantic City, with the most competitive prices around. Circle Liquor is now a proud sponsor of the second hour of the locker with Billy Schwein. Throwing a party, a wedding. Fourth of July's here. How about night in Venice? Let Chet and staff make sure you have everything you need. Check out their website at circlelickers.com or give them a call at 609-927-2921. That's 609-927-2921. They deliver. Chase is out on the road right now. Uh, Just about everybody in our area has heard about the Jersey Man and Philly Man magazine run by ex-Philadelphia tight end Ken Dunnick. But were you aware of their private business network they call the Legacy Club? Every month, they hold private events at upscale locations in Philadelphia and South Jersey that attract over 200 top business people. If you have an interest in attending one of these events and see it's a fit for your business, send an email to ken at jerseymanmagazine.com or give them a call at 856-912-4007 for more information. All right, when we return, we'll wrap it up. You're listening to The Locker with Billy Schwein and Jack Brooks right here on 97.3 ESPN. You're listening to The Locker Room with Billy Schwein on 97.3 ESPN and the free 97.3 ESPN mobile app. All right, we're back broadcasting live at the Tom's River Auto Group studio right here in Northfield, Billy Schwein. Jack Brooks, the president of the Ocean City Lifeguard Alumni Association, Jack, and uh, thanks for coming in today. Hey, thanks for having us back. You know, you are such a supporter of this Unique thing. You're not going to hear this in Des Moines, Iowa. <laughs> but, uh, you know, maybe they should. Maybe it'd be a little more exciting for them. Uh, and I was, I was saying that to a rookie the other day, and, and they, I, was, I was addressing our rookies on the history uh-huh. of the Ocean City Beach Patrol. I'm glad I want you to do thank, that, Jack. They need yep, to know the history. Yep. Alan Karras, the director of operations, and Eric Becker had me speak to the young folks. Okay. And it is our 125th year. Which, were the Schwan you know, twins shooting spitballs at you? Uh, no, they were actually not. I was. They were. They were more respectful than you are. But my. But 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 the uh, interesting thing to me is with these history things. Fred Miller is going to be speaking about the Beach Patrol history on Thursday another evening. Historian. Another historian, Tom, a uh, great historian. We had that. This seems to be the theme again. We we learn from our past to where we are and where we're going. 
Um, on, on Thursday at 7 o'clock at the Community Center in Ocean City at the lecture hall there, Fred Miller will be talking about the 125 years of history wow, that's great. of the Beach Patrol. Museum's open. So we're really looking forward to that. All right, that'll conclude our Beach Patrol report with Jack Brooks. Time goes by too fast. Brought to you by McCann Realtors of Seattle City and the Ocean City Beach Patrol Lake Guard Alumni Association. Thank you, Jack.